Okay, this is the knife. This is the way it comes out of the oven. It has a nice straw brown tempering color. So, to me, this looks good. Now, before I do the rest of the polishing, the first thing I have to do is remove the scale from in the oven. Normally, you think I would use the flat plate for that, but I don't because I don't know if you can see this. Mm. But the tang, the place where the tang hits the blade, that's always the thickest part of knives I make. <coughs> I want a thick connection to the tang so that it's strong and I want the blade to be thinner. So that means that as this part is thin, this part has a, a bulge where it meets the tang. If I just put this on a flat plate, I'm going to cut deep gouges here and there where it meets the thick part and that's extremely annoying to have to remove by hand. So what I do, also I don't want to damage the surface any more than necessary because the knife already has its final shape and if I use a coarse belt Deep scratch lines, deep scratch lines means a very annoying time to remove them. So I take a warm tool of a 14 grit belt. I don't know if you can see this clearly. Most parts are already black steel and some parts 
you still see the pattern of the Damascus. If you still see the pattern of the Damascus, it means you have to remove some more steel. Because if you leave that, it means that some parts still have the for the, the heat scale on it, and those parts won't etch properly. Before you can achieve the heat blank steel. The tip itself has some scratch lines still that I'm going to put this away anyway so that it has a round point. I always leave this bit until the end after heat treatment because should the blade have warped during heat treatment it's much easier to, to fix it if the blade is more or less the same but if it ends in a sharp point and it's become that is more difficult to fix it. Okay, so as I was saying, I always leave this bit because it makes my life much easier should I have to fix anything. It's always easier to remove steel than to fix things if you don't have enough steel left. Okay, so now this side. this but this is what the pattern is going to be like more or less You also notice I do this with my bare hands. The rule of thumb is that after heat treatment, I work with bare hands. As long as I can hold the knife in my hand, it's still cool enough that I don't overheat it and ruin the temper. As long as you can somewhat hold it, even if your fingers start to blister, the steel is okay. 
As long as you don't see it changing color, a couple of pistols won't hurt. Eventually, if you do this long enough, you get more or less heat resistant fingers. With a reason, of course. Okay, mm. now this is ready for hand sanding. Okay, so I'll show you the knife as it is now. I spent some of the afternoon hand sanding it. This is basically a 400 grit hand finish. It's not perfect. Normally if this was a carbon steel blade, I'd polish further and more evenly, but since it's, the, since it's, it's going to be etched anyway, there's really no point to it. 400 grit, nice even finish is more than enough. I haven't showed how I did this particular knife, because, well, to be honest, my family was sitting here with me, and it'd be, be a bit silly for me to hold a monologue with an audience. Can't imagine anybody is interested, especially not my family. <laughs> but uh, now that I have the house to myself again, I'll quickly explain my process. This is a, a different woods knife. It's a dagger, to be precise. This is already sanded at 100 grit and now I would go to the 180 probably so I have this big box full of folders with different grit sandpapers so what I need now is the 180 which I'm Almost out of. So I have a pair of scissors I sometimes use for this. It's an old and worn and good for nothing else pair of scissors. Because my friend Chris Horn will be the first to tell you that scissors and sandpaper are not a match made in heaven. So yeah, we go back to this place where you see the knife. So what I do now is I have this old file. I glued a piece of rubber to it to help spread the impact. I wrap the sandpaper around the scratch lines on this knife for the 100 cut that I did are all in this direction so for the next step in the progression I go diagonally I don't go this way because it's the surface is very small and it's far too easy to mess up the lines or to make deep scratches. By going diagonally I use a longer path which means a bigger surface which means a more even finishing. So This is a job I tend to do at night in the living room 
while watching something on the TV. And with my wife sleeping upstairs, I don't want to make a lot of noise. So if things start rattling, that's not good. That's also why I only do this from 180 and up in the living room. If this was still uh, the grinding lines from the bell grinder that I had to remove by using 100 grit, this would make a very loud and raspy noise and that would wake the people upstairs. Or at least I'd run the risk. Now, the other reason why I didn't show this before is that this is extremely tedious work. So, basically, with the original sketch lines running in this direction, I have to sign by this until all the old lines are gone and the, these ones are all running diagonally. Then I have to take the next step, which would be 320 grit, and I'll probably finish with 500. So that's a lot of... Doing this, if this side of the sandpaper is loaded with dust, I switch around. keeps on going and going and this can take the better part of several hours actually if you want to do it right anyway that's how I end up here so with the sanding gone now it's time to make the knife into its final shape. And to give it a shape, I basically take a sharpie and it'll be something like. just take a simple angle grinder carefully kind of in this bit and then take it to the belt sander and give it a nice curve and when that's done it's ready for etching Hey guys, I don't know at this moment how much you saw of the previous part because the batteries died while I was filming it but as you can see I've reshaped the blunt point into a nice knife point. So what I'm going to do now is etch this in a ferric chloride 
which only if I do a straight razor, there's a convenient pivot hole. I've set the pivot hole, and this one will do. So I'll basically hang it in. And now Since this is going on YouTube, I don't want copyright violations of my video to be removed or switched with that ugly default YouTube music. And I decided to suffer the silence, as I say. Just a few more seconds. So then I'll take it out. I have some 600 grit sandpaper that I use to rub it clean. And then it's coming back. Because the first time I put it in the edge, there's some stains from my fingers and water droplets and various kinds of things. And after the first etching, you can probably still see this. This is what it looks like now. A nice Damascus pattern and a nice cutting edge. yet, but it's promising. Now normally <coughs> I have a process for etching Damascus steel and I have a slightly different process for etching woods and the woods one is actually quite a bit trickier to get to decent but if I do this one like that, then the Damascus will be etched very deep, which is not ideal for a kitchen knife. In a kitchen knife you really don't want deep ridges where you can have germs and things. Yeah, this 
show you what it looks like now and I'm especially happy to see the wood screen coming out this is totally awesome This is a matter of personal opinion, but when I do hatching, I want to rub over the surface clean and the ridges in the pattern should be deep enough that the, the blackness stays between the, the nickel lines. So basically, if, if you sand away, See if I can explain this more clearly. My kingdom for horse. If I could only find something new about it. Basically, if you have a surface and this is a nickel containing layer and here we have a carbon layer and here we have a nickel layer again you want this etching to be deep enough that the black oxidation from the etching process doesn't get rubbed away by the sandpaper but you also don't want it too deep so that all sorts of dirt gets trapped here so it's a bit of a trial and error see as you go along for etching at least for this kind of process and again Thank you. 
thousand kit and as an added bonus this is not really suitable for wet grinding which is a benefit in this case because as I start uh, polishing the surface the sandpaper will start to lose its bite very quickly which is interesting if you don't want to be very abrasive on the surface Yet still abrasive enough to remove the blackness. surface because 
just be as I want it to be. Now I'm going to give one last quick dip to get some nice contrast. It will just be quick dip and then the hints. But for that to work, the blade needs to be Oops. clean. that I never think anything is good enough. I mean, it looks good and I'll finish it. I'll finish everything, but I always keep looking for something that I can do better next time. I'm going to rinse this and I'm going to explain a bit further.